It's going to be a video about phone mounts and about a camera mount and the best options or possibly the, what I would consider the best ways of doing it. So on the 1300 some people want to mount it on the handbars over here, some people want to mount it down on the riser plate down here. And as you can see straight away from tipping the, the camera you're losing a lot of vision up here so you're actually looking down and not looking ahead. So one of the better options is to mount on a quad lock, quad locks are very good above the dash. Now, there's a few ways of doing that. These are actually aftermarket strips, back then, piggyback into the indicators. So when I'm indicating, if I'm looking here and I forget I'm indicating, I can still see it flashing and it bounces off the screen, off this short sports screen I got. So the quad lock, this is the ball joint one you can buy. That's gonna be relevant for the different options that you're gonna mount, you're gonna, you're gonna, you can use to mount to this, because the different ways of doing it the main ways that people use for doing it is a mixel mount which I believe maybe about 150 160 pounds maybe more goes across here and screws into the actual into the sort of captive nuts that are under here and it's a nice and clean look the problem is with that is it's got three holes for ball joints if you then put a ball joint on it and then you put the um, adjustment of the ball joint, which then brings it out. And then you put this on it, you're then bringing it right forward. And the other problem is if you park it up in a deserted area, basically you can quite often you can just undo the adjustment and just take off the middle part and that. And it's just, somebody's just going to take it off if you leave it on there and it's going to go walkies. Um, and it sticks out. So if I was going to do that, what I would do is I'd actually bolt this directly through the middle mixel mount through the middle hole, because I believe there's three on the mixel. The other version that they do, or Biquip do a version, which is basically the same as it, but I believe it's cheaper, probably around about 100 pound, maybe less. I haven't looked recently. This one is a DIY version. So this, like I said, is the ball joint quad lock, which is one of the cheapest quad locks they do. And behind that is a two or three pound plate from B&Q. They do different shapes of these. And then what I've done is I've just bolted directly to the top plate. These used, these top plates, you can pick them up for about 15 quid. And then I've held this, I've actually installed this on the middle, drawn around it, taking this off and then obviously cut it to give me the shape. So it's nice, it's really, really solid. And with this on the back of this, so on the back of this bolt, I've actually put a sheer nut and the thing about, so this such, and then draw the front, so this such prevents this being just removed easily, if anyone wants to do that, because obviously it's about 30 quid, so if you just parked up, sort of quite a deserted area, leaving it overnight, it's just prevents somebody messing with it. So with the sheer nut, as you do up the nut at the back, um, if you're using these usually, the nut will shear off but being plastic if you try that on this as you do it up tight enough to shear it this will actually pull through the front and destroy this so when you get this tight enough all you do is you just file it or hacksaw around the nut and the nut will fall off gently and then i drill the front of that so that will mount on there um so that's a it's not the, probably the cleanest or the prettiest it's probably the i suppose it's the slimmest because it doesn't have a big block there it's not bringing it right forward. So that's uh, one way of doing it. The other way of doing it that some people use is with the clutch, the clutch mounts, which are the round ball mounts, which bolt on there, it's like a block with a rope bolt ball on it. Some people actually put it flat on there and actually screw it down through this plate, bolt it down so that the actual ball joints come in this way. And then again, they put an extension on it. And again, then put this on the front end extension so it brings it forward. So that's how to mount a quad lock the options to mount a quad lock on there. I wouldn't suggest mounting it down there just because if you look down, the odds are somebody in front of you is gonna stop. Now with the action camera, I this is a copy of a GoPro, this is cross toys. I've done a separate video about this, but one of the issues I've got is I can't leave this on the bike where I'm parked up. So I can unplug it and I can remove it now. With the plastic mounts, what you find is eventually the clips snap on the GoPro clips. If you keep unplugging them, pushing them on, I'm like pulling them off, pushing them on, pulling them off, the clips eventually will snap. And that'll be all right for a while because it'll still be tight, but then after a while from all the vibration, that'll actually become loose and your camera will start falling off. And trying to get it on with the clips, 
it's an absolute nightmare because obviously normally you're wearing gloves so that's a pain so with this I'll put a link down to this this is I believe 15 pounds and then the mount above it I thought I might as well go full metal mount up here the block above here comes as a two pack is 11 pounds can just go with the existing one you come with it come to the camera but I thought I'd just go with metal on metal this is smaller than a GoPro mount absolutely rock solid you want to use on the mounts you use here you want to use the shortest possible one the longer they are the more it creates vibration on that and for removing this even if I'm wearing gloves well when you mount it you want to put a screen at its lowest position obviously for the lineup you don't want to do it with the screen up and then put a screen down in and snap your camera off the, with the camera at the lowest position oh sorry the screen at the lowest position even wearing gloves although I'm not wearing gloves right now I can literally just reach in press that button and just slide it off and that is a really nice well built metal mount cast or alley this is I believe designed for cameras like actually as in full DSLRs it's like a quick mount for DSLRs and that is the part that comes with the lower part and then obviously from there upwards the black upwards is the metal this is a small metal mount this is in a two pack for just about 11 quid and them two parts are about 15 and same thing for installing it so literally just push it on solid as a rock it's like a tiniest bit of movement but that's just because the actual mirror flexes some people have said oh how does your mirror cover stay on I believe I've got three clips on there not two some a lot of them come with two clips I put three clips on there so on, on the pushings on the pins each one's got a clip so as you push it in it locks in in three um, and I've just tightened them up and I've never had a problem with it coming off but I would like to put a when I change it I'm gonna put a security cable bell so yeah that's how that's a good mount to get and then that's how to do the phone mounts hope that helps people if they're considering mounting on a phone uh, mounting a phone as your sat nav and then this is the short sports screen that I got so this is ultra ultra low it's great for getting wind blast I think it's about 20 quid online on eBay and then at full height it goes just below the division so it goes just below your sight line so it's not in the way of the helmet but it blocks enough to send the wind over the top and yeah works perfectly Thanks for watching.